Hello there and welcome to my new video. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking. First of all, before I start this video, I want to say thank you all who decided to support me on Patreon. Thank you, friends, and of course, have a blessed day. Now, as tradition implies, we should jump to Bakhmut and then work ourselves around the entire front line. Now, situation in Bakhmut had changed significantly since I last uploaded a video. It is safe to say that Russians had achieved yet another major victory within the city. This is the changes that had appeared. Well, first of all, I'm using Syriac maps and unfortunately this map doesn't have a recap option. So the way I decided to work around it is basically leave the last updated map here. And if the map is updated, I will update it in the next tab so we can see the changes. So for example, this is the situation of yesterday. And this is the situation of today. As you can see here in the north, Russians were able to achieve a major success from Pirimogi Street and along this street entirely, as well as capturing the old military base here and gaining more and more control over the Tchaikovsky Street. They were able to capture about this much land from the Ukrainian forces. Now, mind you, they were able to capture so much land in the last 12 to maybe 6 hours. Overall, if we zoom in, we can see that Russians have captured the entire military base. Fighting here continues around Olympic school as well as post office. Also, it is important to know that Russians had straightened their front line. So there are no bridgeheads developing here for the Russians. It is, of course, more convenient for Wagner and Russian troops as they can reinforce their front lines more evenly without endangering any of their bridgeheads. Here again we have to talk about the Tchaikovsky street. I have mentioned in the last video that it is a very important street for the control of which Russians and Ukrainians were fighting for some time. Now Russians were able to capture about this much territory in the last 12 hours along the Tchaikovsky street, thus expanding their control over it. As you can see also, they have advanced near Polivaya street here and had reached Tchaikovsky street on this sector as well. Major success has happened here. The Russians were able to capture this garage area and areas surrounding it. So this proves that Russians are attacking simultaneously along the entire front line thus lowering possibilities of Ukrainian counter-offensives. Now fighting continues here towards this school. Once again, Russians have a long way to go as they are trying to control this road right here. But as you can see, basically Russians have now reached last stronghold of Ukrainian positions. It is the last sector with high raised buildings. So portion of them is located here to the east of the Tchaikovsky street. And this whole massive high-rise building sector that is located to the west of the Tchaikovsky street. As you can see here, Russians came extremely close and are now fighting for this sector. They're also attacking here in the attempt to clear the last part before they reach this sector, as well as they are attacking along these streets. Now fighting in Samalyot district continues without any change for the Russians. Like I said in some videos ago, Ukrainians had heavily reinforced their positions within this sector and are not allowing Russians to gain foothold here. This, however, did not help overall situation within Bakhmut city itself as Russians had developed extreme success here. So about this much was captured by the Russian forces. This is the sign of the collapse of their defensive lines. Now, again, it is reported that Bakhmut has become a scene of occasional tank battles. So both Russians and Ukrainians are using tanks within the city. One of the tactics that Russians are employing is such that a tank for example, is advancing along some street. They receive a radio call that, for example, there is a Ukrainian position, let's say, in this building right here. So the tank drives here or in any place where he could physically see the building and then starts shooting towards it in attempt to destroy and kill whatever Ukrainian troops are within this building. I have a video of a similar situation for you to look at. So basically it is a BMC owned, it would look like it's a T90M tank and um, it's advancing within Bakhmut streets and doing exactly what I told you.
Now, I believe it is a good time to talk about overall tactics being employed by the Ukrainian and Russian forces. As an example, I will use this sector right here. So let's say there is a Russian attack happening from Palvova Street here. And Russians are storming along it towards these buildings. Now, it is reported that Russians are using extreme amount of artillery and guided FAB 500 bombs. So, Bakhmut is a living hell for Ukrainian forces at this point. Also, Russians had started to use heavily their aviation directly within Bakhmut city. With that in mind, we have to understand that, for example, if Ukrainians have defensive lines within these high-raised buildings, they are under constant artillery and air strikes. So, let's say Ukrainians have given up on the pressure and decided to retreat. At this point, usually they mine the buildings they are leaving, neither wait for Russians to come in or blow up immediately but overall they are exploding those buildings destroying them altogether thus this sector cannot be used by the russians as a defensive strong point this is weakening russian positions in this sector after russians move in ukrainians are committing some counter attacks in attempt to regain control over the sectors we saw something like this happening here near the rail station but it would seem that ukrainians are losing enthusiasm as they are losing more and more land within the city of Bakhmut. So we're done with Bakhmut. Situation in Hramov remains the same. At this point, even pro Russian sources admitted to the fact that they are not controlling this settlement. Same goes with the 0506 highway. Control over this road has not been established by Russians as of right now. Fighting in Bogdanivka continues without change, as well as around Grigorivka. In Arikhova Vasilivka, Russians are still tangled in position of warfare with Ukrainian forces, as well as fighting continues along the E-40 highway. Now, we are going to the Siversk front, where Russians had conducted limited military operations towards Spirne, Verkhne Kamyansky and Bilaharivka. Here in Serebryansky forest, Russians were reported to attack Grigorivka and in the general direction of Zarichne. The entire front line here did not see any change. Villages of Yampalivka, Terni, Ivanovka, Novosadovo, Novolubivka, Nevsky and Makivka were subjects of heavy artillery barrages by the Russians. Then we go to the Avdiivka front. Now, here changes had appeared. First of all, situation around Krasnoharivka has remained the same without any changes. Russians are still controlling portions of those fields. However, they had achieved more success here around the rail lines. This is their gains in the last 48 hours. This is something that I've predicted in the last video. I would assume Russians will continue attacking here, expanding their zone of control in this overall area. Again, it is important to regain control over the rail lines here, as well as attacking towards Novokalinova. Overall, the triangle of Krasnogorivka, Novokalinova and Novobakhmutivka continues to be a hot spot north of Avdiivka, as heavy fighting and heavy clashes are continuing around the rail lines and here in this road. Village of Kamyanka remains in Ukrainian control. Russians had conducted limited military operations from Vadani towards Severny and Todenke. And I actually have a video of Russian bombardments of Ukrainian positions within one of these tree lines. That is that. This goes to show that Russians are attacking here along the entire front line towards the Ukrainian positions within this forest line. It is the last Ukrainian position that covers Severny from the Russians. So this front line is not inactive in any way. Russians are constantly harassing Ukrainian positions 
and advancing ever slightly. Here situation in Pervomaisky had not seen any change, same here in Nevelsky. Then of course we have Marinka, here Russians were unsuccessfully attacking to the north of the settlement as well as in the south and to its center. Village of Pobeda still is in Ukrainian control. Russians were also attacking towards Novomikhailivka but without any success. Then we have Vuglidar, again Russian artillery and aviation is turning this city into a rubble. While Russian Spetsnaz and VDV is tangled in urban style warfare within the Dacia area right here. Russians are also advancing towards the mines along these fields in attempt to cut off this road. So this is the general situation on the front line and in Bakhmut in particular. As you can see Ukrainians are at this point controlling about 10% of the city. This sector right here will become their last refuge and we'll see whether Ukrainians will decide to retreat from it or fight to the death. At this point fighting continues here around Hermova and the supply road. Perhaps possible Russian success or failure will determine the fate of Bakhmut. If Hermova will fall and the road would be physically cut, Ukrainians will be physically unable to defend the sector and will be forced to retreat under constant Russian fire. If Ukrainians however will be able to hold Hramova and this road, Ukrainians will continue to throw their troops in Bakhmut in attempts to hold Russians for as long as possible and perhaps wait for the relief force that they are promising us for about few months now. So this is the end of the video, I hope you liked it. If you did, of course, as always, please consider supporting it with a like, a comment and if you haven't done that, a subscription. Please know that these actions promote my video to a wider audience. If you feel extra generous, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It would give me financial stability and I will not rely on ad revenue, which is of course great. As always, humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember, Russia will be free and great.